like normal because this is what I do now as a trucker. And I wanted to address this to those who are looking at becoming a trucker. Okay, I've got a couple points for you that these recruiters and employment people are not going to address to you. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of my history and a little bit of my story. Uh, I came to trucking in December of 2002. When I did come to trucking, I was on welfare and had two small children in the house. I had no spouse and no assistance from either of my children's fathers. Now, my family at the time were against me going into trucking because they felt that with my small frame and my history that it would not be a good fit for me. That being said, I climbed onto a bus and headed out to, at that time, the Swift School, which was in Millington, Tennessee, in December of 2002. When I arrived at the school, there were 115 students. In the first week, due to medical and drugs, we dropped down to 55 students. That's in the first week of training. Now, I gotta back up a little bit because I was on welfare and I was also at that time, I had a very young child. She was about three months old. So I was receiving WIC, that's Woman, Infant, Infant and Child. And prior to me climbing on that bus, I had to come up with $150 to put forward to the school for lodging and food for the couple of weeks that we were going to be actually living at the school, which is basically living in a hotel. Now for me, 150 bucks at that time was equivalent to a million dollars. So first off, I had to find somewhere to send both of my children in the family to stay with for six months because, uh, you know, the schooling at that time was six weeks in in-house training and then you went out uh, with two other trainers for another six weeks. So I did that. Then the week prior to me going on that bus, I went to work at a Ford plant with Labor Ready, driving vehicles up onto rail cars and chaining them down. These are brand new cars that are being shipped out of Norfolk, Virginia, all over the country. Now, I worked an eight-hour shift in the daytime, and then went and then had four hours off and then went back to work and did another eight hour shift at night. Then had a couple hours off and went back and did it all over again. So in essence, I was working 18 hour days for four days prior to me climbing on that bus. So you'll have to excuse me if I do not remember that bus ride at all because I pretty much slept the whole time. Now, back to the school. As I said, we started out with 115, and in the first week we were down to 55. By the end of training, we were down to 15. By the end of the first year, we were down to five. Here we are going on 20 years later, and we are down to two that are still driving a truck or alive. I want to reiterate what I just said. From 115, 19 years later, there are two left. Two. Trucking 
trucking is not the end-all be-all career for everyone. Most truckers spend 11 to 16 hours a day locked in a truck driving down the highway with only minimal contact with humans. Okay, we do have cell phones now which makes it uh, a lot easier than what it was on those who preceded me in trucking. However, it is still hard. Emotionally, it is very hard. Most truckers learn immediately within the first year to do everything on their own. This makes it exceptionally hard on families because most truckers are out, especially if they are new truckers, they are out anywhere from three weeks to six months before coming home. Now, for those that are looking at going into trucking, I will tell you that your first five years in trucking, you are not going to make a lot of money. So all what these recruiters are telling you about making 48,000, 50,000, 85,000, Yes, you can get, you can work your way up to that, but your first five years in trucking, you will be below the poverty line, and you will not be going home. So, if you are willing to take that chance, trucking is a good career. However, there are some few things that you need to recognize about trucking. One, truckers have a higher rate of cancer, diabetes, and heart attacks. This is mostly related to the fact that most truckers have a poor diet because they are constantly on the road. Therefore, they are eating at restaurants and fast food places, and the ability for them to get organic food or fresh produce is fairly low. To give you an example, you go into most truck stops, if you go and buy yogurt at most truck stops, it is normally so sour, it's, it's expired, okay? Most of the fresh greens that you would go to buy at like the deli in a truck stop, the greens will be wilted and browning and they are not they're not any good okay um, so yes a lot of it has to do with diet also truckers have a higher rate of tooth decay again this is because of the fact that you are not going to get a shower every day and a lot of times you're not going to have time to do much more than go in and do a quick brushing on your teeth and use the bathroom and grab a cup of coffee and then you're on the road again for 10, 11 hours a day, every day, okay? Um, a lot of older truckers have kidney problems. This is because they are having to hold it from going to the bathroom on a regular basis. So. That's another issue, especially with the pandemic, finding bathrooms, okay? Not all truck stops have bathrooms anymore, and not all rest areas have bathrooms anymore either, uh, and a lot of the rest areas have closed. So not only are you looking for bathrooms, but you're also looking for when it is time for you to park your truck and go to bed. Uh, you are looking for a place to park the truck because a lot of the parking has been took away. On top of all of this, you have got a set of regulations that you are supposed to know inside and out, and the regulations could be anywhere from 500 pages to 1,000 pages, depending on what you're hauling. So, you've got that going on. And then you've also got, you're going across state lines with various, various uh, scale houses 
and DOT officials who live for making a trucker's life hard. I say this because I have been pulled over before for no reason and done a spot inspection and on the side of the highway. Okay? And been given a clean inspection because, I mean, I check my equipment. But, the fact that they held me up for an hour and a half from my daily duties meant that that was an hour and a half of my labor I did not get paid for. Okay? You don't get paid by the hour in trucking. Most companies do not pay by the hour. Most companies either pay a percentage of what the load pays, which, good luck on that, because the broker is going to tell you that Okay, well, the percentage was this, when in actuality, he's getting his right off the top before he says that what the percentage was. So, yeah. Now, on top of them lying about the percentage that the load would pay, they, they will also lie about the mileage that a load will pay, because a lot of drivers are paid by the mile. So, they will use something called Rand McNally miles or short miles, mover miles, okay? And you could look at your speedometer all you want. Your speedometer could say, well, that that load was 732 miles, and hello, you get paid 500 for it. Miles, not cash. So you'll get paid 500 miles for that run, even though the only way to get there, it took you 732 miles to do. So you get shorted that way too. Also, with most trucking companies, you do not get paid if you are sitting at a dock, whether it be an hour or 10 hours. You're not getting paid for that time. I have worked 70 hours in a week before and got paid $200 for the whole week. This does happen, folks. And a lot of times it happens because you've pissed off the dispatcher for some reason. Okay, so, I mean, it, just be aware of that coming into trucking. I mean, it, there is no guarantee that you're going to make a lot of money in, in, in trucking. Can you make a lot of money in trucking? Yes. Trucking is wide open for you to become a business owner, but... Be aware that you really need to think about becoming a business owner in trucking because you can lose millions of dollars in one accident. Just saying. Now, a lot of truckers used to be that there used to be like a family attitude out here. That is no longer the case. Now it is cutthroat. Um, even among companies, other drivers will go behind your back, make friends with the dispatcher so that they can get specific loads that benefit them, you know, and, uh, you know, this happens a lot. So, there's absolutely nothing to do about it except to accept the fact that a lot of times you're just going to get screwed okay um, I'm just I'm just breaking it down honestly uh, I have missed family weddings I have missed family birthdays I've missed Christmases I've missed Thanksgivings um, important family dates that yes I told the companies about because uh, I'm no longer working with those companies. But, you know, I told the companies about and literally got sent in the opposite direction. Uh, this does happen, okay? Uh, so trucking, trucking really is not for everyone. Now, on top of all that, you also have uh, the customers that you have to deal with. And uh, a lot of times these customers are worse than the guy down the street for they lose from you. I mean, they they uh, 
they can sit there and make your life miserable. I mean, if you actually say something about that you're in a hurry to get home for some reason, those guys on the loading dock will slow the F down just so that you are stuck there for six or eight hours. They just do it on purpose. And, and you know, they think it's a game. And you will run into this all over the trucking industry. Whether you work locally, over the road, regionally, you will run into this. Trust me. You will run into these people. Okay? Who just are so miserable in their life that they've got to try and make your life as miserable as theirs. Now, that I've addressed some of the negative about trucking. Let me address some of the positives. Some of the positives is you have a lot of time to think. Because, you know, drivers get very bored driving down the road all day. I mean, you know, you can drive for 10 hours a day on the, on the highway and see how bored you will be if you're doing it every day. Okay? And so drivers tend to listen to a lot of books on audio. Now, some drivers listen to, like, graphic novels. Other drivers listen to, like, uh, college college classes. Uh, but I have found that I would say a good 70% of truckers are a lot smarter than what you give them credit for because they've got all this time to just study things and listen to things and just ingest things, which is why you find that truckers are very up on uh, the local news and and uh, what's going on in the country, you know, um, because because that's what they do, is they listen on the CB, they listen on YouTube, they listen on audio books, they, they, they're listening to what's going on. They're seeing uh, in the especially the inner cities, they're seeing the, the issues going on, okay? Also, a lot of truckers come, like I did, from welfare, and they get off of welfare, and they end up, a lot of times, uh, like I did at one time, I owned my own company, I had my own truck, and was driving for myself for a number of years. Um, so yes, you can you can make decent money in trucking. Now let's get down to the numbers. Your first five years, you're probably going to make anywhere from thirty to forty thousand a year. Okay. Um, that's just being honest. That's that's your gross pay. You know, you got to take your taxes and your child support and everything else out of that. Okay. After five years, you can make you, the, the cost of living out on the road becomes negligible, okay? Because you, by that time, you have figured out a lot of places to go, just to sleep for less money. You, you're normally making your meals in your truck, so you're saving money that way. Um, but on top of that, since you've been trucking for five years, you're also now making more pay than what a driver coming out the first year is making in most companies okay I say that because yeah they'll say well you know everybody makes uh, 39 cents a mile okay well yeah everybody makes 39 cents a mile but the guy that's been driving for five years is going to get more mileage than the guy that just came on who's the rookie okay so you will definitely make more money the longer that you're in trucking. So the money is out there. Right now, I'm a 19-year veteran. I drive locally. I normally work 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. I'm off on the weekends. I'm off on holidays. And I get time and a half after 40 hours. Plus, I get vacation time and personal days off. Now, I've been in the business 19 years. Okay? My gross pay for last year was around $51,000. And I'm home every day. Okay? If I was to go over the road, I would probably make eighty-five dollars to $90,000 in a company truck. 
just say it. The money is there. It's getting through the first five years of trucking that you really have to look at because the first five years of trucking is absolute pure hell. It's going to be hell on your bodies. It's going to be hell on your mental attitude. It's going to be hell on your family. Okay, because this puts a, a lot of truckers to get divorced. It's just going to be hell. So I hope that this helps y'all make the decision whether or not to be a trucker. With that, I got to go. Peace.